Hello, in this video we're going to look at the economics of exports. A country will export a good if it has a comparative advantage in its production. The US firms, in this case say Boeing, will export airplanes because it produces airplanes at a lower opportunity cost than other world producers. If the U.S. doesn't allow trade in airplanes, the domestic price of U.S. airplanes will be lower than the world price. Why? Because the U.S. firms can produce airplanes at a lower opportunity cost than foreign firms. They have a comparative advantage in the production of planes. The price of U.S. airplanes without trade will be lower than the world price. If the U.S. allows trade in airplanes, the domestic firms will export airplanes to the rest of the world. The U.S. price of airplanes will increase to the world price. Because domestic firms can sell as many airplanes as they want at the going world market price, as determined by the world demand and supply of airplanes, they will no longer sell airplanes at the lower domestic price. Domestic consumers will now pay the higher world price. So again, if we allow U.S. companies to export Boeing airplanes, domestic consumers will now pay higher prices for those airplanes and they'll be paying the world price. So the domestic price becomes the world price with trade. There are going to be winners and losers. Domestic firms benefit by allowing free trade and exports. They can sell more air airplanes and sell them at a higher world price. Domestic consumers pay a higher price and buy less. Overall, the gains to the domestic firms outweigh the losses to the domestic consumers. So society overall benefits. So here we're going to look at the domestic market. We've got a demand for the good and the supply of the good. And we're going to look at what's going on in this market before trade, before we're allowing export trade. The equilibrium price is $5 and the equilibrium quantity is 5 So domestic consumers pay $5 and domestic consumers buy 5 units. Let's look at consumer surplus before trade. Consumer surplus is going to be the difference between the height of the demand curve and the market price, in this case $5, up to the last unit bought and sold, which is 5 right here. So we got this triangle and this triangle encompasses area A, B, and C. Again, the difference between the height of the demand curve, the market price, up to the last unit bought and sold. So consumer surplus is represented by area A, B, and C. This again is just a difference between consumers maximum willingness to pay and the market price. Producer surplus is going to be area D and E. This is going to be bounded by the market price and the supply curve. So the area between the market price and the supply curve up to that last unit bought and sold, the fifth unit. So we got this triangle here, D and E. So total surplus before export trade is consumer surplus plus producer surplus. So area A, B, C, D, and E. Area A, B, C, D, and E is total surplus. Now let's look at the domestic market after export trade. The price now will become the world price or seven dollars. This is what consumers pay, this is what sellers will receive. Domestic consumers will only buy three units. So we take this seven dollars, walk over to the demand curve and come down. Domestic consumers will now only buy three units of the good. Domestic firms or domestic sellers at this $7 price, we take the $7, walk over to the supply curve and come down. We see that domestic sellers will sell seven units. Be careful, there is no surplus or excess supply in this example. The difference between what the domestic consumers buy and the domestic firms sell is going to represent the exports. So foreign consumers are going to buy four units. This horizontal distance between the demand and supply curve represents the number of exports. So that's going to be four. Foreign consumers will buy four units. 
So again, overall, the domestic firm sells seven units. Three of those units go to domestic consumers. Four of those units are exported and purchased by foreign consumers. So once again, exports equals four. In terms of consumer surplus, consumers are paying higher prices now. Domestic consumers are paying higher prices, and they're not buying as much. So it's just going to be this area between the height of the demand curve and the price that domestic consumers are paying when there's trade up to the number of units that d domestic consumers buy, which is three. So this triangle A represents consumer surplus right here. Producer surplus is going to be the difference between the price that producers are selling the good for, which is now $7 when we have export trade, and the supply curve up to the last unit sold by producers. So we got this big triangle right here, which is encompassing area B, C, D, E, and F. So let me highlight it here. This big triangle represents producer surplus when there is export trade. Overall, total surplus is area A, B, C, D, E, and F. So it's just consumer surplus plus producer surplus. There is a gain from trade here. When we didn't have trade, if you recall from the last screen, without trade, total surplus was area B, A, B, C, D, and E. With trade, total surplus is A, B, C, D, E, and F. So we have an extra uh, area here, extra letter that we gain with trade. Uh, one other thing you can notice here is that uh, because of trade, consumers lose area B and C. Okay, so consumers are losing surplus equal to area B and C. That is being picked up by the producers. So some of the consumer's loss is pocketed by producers. Okay, and this extra area F that producers are picking up, that, that area F didn't occur when we did not have trade. So the before trade example, area F uh, didn't go to anybody. Okay, so that is going to be the ultimate gain from trade here is this area F. All right, uh, moving on. Uh, before export trade, uh, price is $5, a quantity is 5 So if we wanted to calculate consumer surplus uh, instead of just using letters, it's going to be the area of the triangle that encompasses area A, B, and C. So again, this is before export trade. So the area of this triangle is 1 half base times height. And I have the calculation right here, 10 minus 5, and 5 minus 0 gives the dimensions of this triangle. So consumer surplus is $12.50. Before export trade, producer surplus was the area between the price of $5 and the supply curve. And that area of this triangle is given by these dimensions here. So we got 5 minus 0. And we got a, a base here of 5 minus 0, a height here of 5 minus 0. So producer surplus is $12.50. Adding up consumer and producer surplus, total surplus is $25. Now doing the same thing with after export trade. Consumer surplus is just area A. And the area of that triangle is $4.50. Producer surplus after trade is B, C, D, E, and F. So this big triangle right here has the following dimensions. And producer surplus is $24.50. Total surplus then is $29 with trade. The gains from trade is area F. We could calculate the triangle of area F if we wanted to. And that's going to be $4.00. And we could also look at the gains from trade by looking at the change in total surplus from trade. Total surplus with trade is $29. Total surplus without trade in our previous example is $25. So the difference here represents the increase in surplus from allowing trade. All right, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.